with the Valley's most in-depth weather forecast video Thursday evening edition of Weather for Weather Geeks. It's that time of the year that we oftentimes have to talk about uh, thunderstorm damage, wind damage, even tornadic activity across parts of the region. And uh, yesterday was a big day across uh, parts of southern Ohio and western Ohio especially. And we'll talk about some of the uh, activity that we had around here last evening as well. But uh, first things first, certainly your eye is drawn to kind of the center of Ohio and points to the south, maybe I-70 and south. Lots of reports of hail, of wind damage, and yes, we even had some confirmed tornadoes yesterday. The National Weather Service office in Wilmington, Ohio, that covers southwest and central Ohio, they went out and did several surveys today, and the strongest tornado they found was this. Uh, EF2 tornado with winds of at least 110 miles per hour uh, near West Milton, near Tip City. This isn't far from the Dayton area. And uh, this was on the ground for quite a while, about 14 miles. Significant damage to industrial buildings, including a Meyer uh, distribution center. You may have seen the uh, video of that, pretty dramatic footage. Uh, so lots of uh, damage to homes and outbuildings, but you know, the good news is thanks to very good lead times on the warnings. Great job by the National Weather Service and uh, media meteorologists as well. Uh, we had limited um, injuries and no fatalities with that activity. Now, while the vast majority of the severe weather was off to our south and west yesterday, we did have one Boeing segment that perked up just as it pushed into western parts of Columbiana County. Uh, before 10 o'clock last evening. So we had some wind damage in a swath from about Hanoverton to Lisbon to Rogers over towards uh, East Palestine and not as much in Western PA, but across a good chunk of central Columbiana County, we had uh, some pretty strong winds and uh, lots of power outages and some uh, tree damage as a result. This is a snapshot of what the radar was showing at 10.08 last evening with this uh, core of wind blowing right through the Lisbon area with radar estimates here of about 60 to 65 miles per hour. So this wind did mean some business. There wasn't a tremendous amount of thunder and lightning with this. There was some, but not a lot. This was mostly a kind of a vicious line of, of heavy showers with strong winds that pushed through. And, you know, this was a little bit of a surprise. You know, the ingredients certainly were not as good here locally as off to our south, but we had just enough going for us in the Route 30 corridor in central Columbiana County that we had a pretty mean line last evening. Today, a little hint of fall in the air, especially through about midday. Uh, I went out and uh, hit some golf balls around midday today, and when the clouds were obscuring the sun and a breeze was blowing, it kind of reminded me of late September almost. Uh, it was it was a little on the cool side. Now, the sky cleared pretty nicely late in the day, but temperatures were struggling with the clouds today and uh, limited sunshine for a while. We even had a couple of sprinkles and showers earlier on. The official high at the airport was 70. The hourly temperatures are shown here, the top of the hour temperatures. And yeah, 69, 70, that was about it. Across most of the region, we should be around 77 to 78 at this time of the year. We won't be to that seasonal average, it looks like, until early on next week. Today stood in stark contrast to this date in weather history. Back in 1933, 99 degrees. Now, this isn't the all-time record for any date, but it's in the top 10 very early in the season for this kind of heat. And in fact, this ties uh, two other dates, one, I believe, 1952 and another in that hot summer of 1988. Uh, three times we've hit 99 in the month of June, the hottest temperature, the hottest June temperature on record, 99. So on today's date in 1933, also uh, on later dates in June in 1952 and 1988. All right, you may have seen uh, recently in some, if you follow some astronomy accounts on social media, um, five planets visible in the sky when the sky is clear enough right before daybreak, just as the sky is starting to lighten up. Uh, so this is around 5 to 5.30. Early risers may want to check this out. Now, Mercury's hard to see. It's low in the sky, and it's pretty faint. Mercury will get a little bit brighter and a little easier to see as we head into midsummer, into July. Um, but technically it can be seen low, close to the horizon on the east in the eastern sky, but much easier to see Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn all lining up along what's called the elliptic, uh, kind of right in a row, Saturn the highest in the sky. And again, the best chance to check this out, uh, especially if you want to try to see all five, be around 5 to 5.30 a.m. After that, it's too bright outside for Mercury to be seen. Uh, before that, uh, Mercury hasn't even risen into the sky yet before about 5 a.m. So the sweet spot's 5, 5.15, maybe as late as 5.30. Again, early morning risers, something to check out for our Friday morning. 
Now, Friday is still, again, going to be kind of a cool day by June standards, but this is a nice day overall. A fair amount of sunshine to kick off the day with temperatures in the mid-50s. Pushing 70 at midday, and we'll get into the kind of 73 to 75 range in most communities. Pretty pleasant afternoon, although clouds will increase during the second half of the day. That being said, if you have outdoor plans on Friday, if uh, your grass needs to be mowed, if uh, you're going to be uh, heading outside for any reason, I think we're dry through the daylight hours, and the forecast continues to trend drier for Friday night and the first half of the weekend. In fact, I think this will be a pretty decent day on Saturday, kind of like tomorrow. Not exactly a pool day, unless you have a heated pool, um, but a decent day, lower 70s, mix of sun and clouds. Our forecast is carrying that small chance of a shower still in it, but by tomorrow we may be able to just completely kind of nuke that chance of a, of a shower from Saturday's forecast. That uh, should be the better half of the weekend. Now let's talk about the setup for Sunday. We have a kind of a more potent trough of low pressure swinging through the lower Great Lakes on Sunday. Some ingredients look to be there for some thunderstorm activity midday and afternoon, and with pretty strong wind fields aloft, uh, we're not going to be able to rule out some stronger storms as well. Just re quickly recapping that weekend forecast, though, 73 Saturday. You notice the rain chance Sunday is above 50% in any one place. We may even raise this a little more as we go through the next 24 hours or so. After the weekend, the heat will really start to build in. Uh, I haven't changed this outlook since yesterday. In the red here, you know, this is no mortal lock of any sort of severe weather event, but I think the highest chance of some gusty thunderstorms will be uh, around most of Northeast Ohio, Northwestern PA, Western New York, uh, mostly after about midday on Sunday. Now, the atmosphere will not be tremendously warm. You know, we're talking about mid-70s at best on Sunday. But the dew points are going to start to come up, and there's a lot of wind energy aloft, a lot of uh, wind shear, changing of the wind direction and speed with height. And while I don't think this is any sort of tornado outbreak or anything like that, one thing we look at uh, when we kind of uh, are thinking about severe weather, especially when there's a lot of wind energy aloft, something we call the significant tornado parameter, basically taking into account wind speed, wind direction, changing of it with height, how much instability is in the atmosphere. These, all, these numbers all look small, right? Typically, when we start really noticing uh, perhaps an elevated risk of tornadic activity, we would want these STP, sort of significant tornado parameter, values to be closer to one but when they're around 0 0.3 0 0.4 you know we, we you know we can't ignore that it's definitely at the lower end of the scale but it's something that can't be ignored even if we don't have any isolated tornadic activity on sunday i think we still have a decent chance at this point of seeing at least a couple of feistier thunderstorms we'll continue to fine-tune that outlook over the next couple of days and including on friday evenings weather for weather geeks as i mentioned yesterday the heat is on for next week Nothing crazy for June, but certainly a change from the recent pattern, which has not been all that warm. We're talking temperatures pushing 90 with an increase in humidity during midweek. I think we're going to have occasional chances of some heavy thunderstorms in this midweek period as well. We're going to be kind of on the fringes of this heat dome that will be sitting over the eastern U.S. And when you're on the fringes of a, a dome of, of heat or a ridge of high pressure at this time of the year, you have to watch out for clusters of storms to kind of ride along the periphery of that ridge. So we may be susceptible to seeing some heavy storms middle of next week, but otherwise the story, of course, is going to be the heat, which will last a few days, and then I think it will cool off uh, around Father's Day weekend coming up in eight or nine days. All right, so again, we'll talk more about the weekend forecast and more uh, coming up on Friday evening's edition of Weather for Weather Geeks. Thanks for watching tonight, and enjoy the rest of your evening.